Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. And a special uh, good uh, welcome to those who are visiting with us this morning, and also for those who are online watching us at home. Our service begins on page 101. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. with you. And a sentence of scripture from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number six, <coughs> Immortal and Invisible, God Only Wise. Almighty God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that has passed, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
remain seated for the first reading. First reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now stand and sing the appointed psalm this morning, which is Psalm 23 which also comes from 147 in the book of Thanks and Praise. The Lord's my shepherd, I want one. <laughs> They will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him 
because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. <coughs> this is the word of the Lord. I speak to God. <coughs> Just ask the congregation to stand now as we come to the baptism. And I'd ask Roman if you just wouldn't mind pausing that camera and moving it over. Uh, uh, queen or a princess, 
uh, whatever they, they enjoy, uh, getting dressed up with, and there's uh, a cake, uh, a cake for each uh, the boy and the girl who uh, are the, 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 the dressed up in, in that way, the wee prize. Uh, so thanks to the Sunday School for, for organising that uh, for Sunday next. And, uh, and Sunday School will run through the month of May uh, and close in early June, as, as would have been the practice prior to the pandemic. And it's just so good uh, that uh, we are able uh, to meet Sunday to Sunday. And uh, I want to say thanks to those who who lead in, in Sunday school. Right, um, I want to begin the one saying this morning by um, talking about there's, there's a, a theologian that uh, you think, oh, the word theologian, that's scary. But there's a man called Tom Wright. Now, he was a bishop in, I think it was Durham. And uh, he's um, different posts and departments of theology. He's one of the most accessible uh, people um, uh, uh, who writes, and uh, I would often uh, turn to his his uh, writings when I'm preparing sermons. He, he is very very <coughs> accessible, and uh, so if you're reading somebody accessible, I'm hoping that you're sharing something that's accessible. And Tom. Uh, he, Tom Wright, he visited the Holy Land and uh, in one of his books I came across a description of, um, uh, and I remember it, I can't remember which one it was, but he, he describes uh, having gone and uh, encountering the, the shepherd in, in the Holy Land uh, when he did a visit there. And uh, the scene he described um, is not unlike the scene that has been read uh, this morning uh, by Julie from the, the Bible. And um, the, the sheep did respond 2,000 years later, still people, nomadic people, pastoring like that. And the sheep did respond in the way that uh, uh, is described because um, they responded to the shepherd. Because Tom himself said he tried uh, to call the sheep and they just plain ignored him. Um, and uh, they were listening for the one voice uh, that mattered, the one voice that they um, uh, trusted. So just listen again to these verses. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he was brought out, and when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. And it was amazing. Tom said uh, that's exactly what happened when he uh, tried that out. In a world um, where people uh, knew and understood the, the close relationship between a shepherd and, uh, and the sheep, um, this was the best way that Jesus himself found to answer questions uh, that were being asked of him. And the image of that shepherd enabled him to speak about his authority, who he was, why he what was uh, uh, the, the kingship that, that he was proclaiming, uh, the leadership that he was was offering, and uh, and it's amazing that um, uh, two thousand years later you can still see uh, remnants of that in modern day Israel. This is the image that, of the shepherd that's used by Jesus speaking into an agrarian, uh, an agricultural type background. And it's important to remember that the questions asked of Jesus then are the same questions that people ask uh, today. Um, and their questions um, could kind of come to the mind of any one of us here today in church. Um, who is Jesus? Uh, was Jesus the long-awaited uh, Messiah? Uh, was he said? Was, was he who he said he was? All those kind of questions in the round of Jesus and his leadership and his kingship. Jesus is posing the question, how do you know God's appointed leader uh, when he comes? So Jesus is responding to the people uh, who are asking those questions. And he uses um, 
that he uses this, this image of a shepherd because it helps him. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. Jesus says you'll know, uh, you'll know the leader in just the same way as you would know who the real shepherd was uh, out on the hills. The sign of the king is the response um, uh, that comes uh, from uh, the heart. And that's another part uh, of this dynamic. Because you think about a shepherd and sheep, sheep follow. Uh, and Jesus is saying that the sign that, uh, of kingship is how people respond. When people hear his voice and in love follow him. That's one of the signs that, the, that Jesus is the authentic leader. Uh, if you think about it, it's the response that Jesus encountered as he travelled through Galilee, as he headed to Jerusalem. We, we spoke a couple of weeks back about, about the Samaritan woman at the well. She responded. She could see he was the authentic uh, shepherd. When, uh, and that's kind of typical of all the encounters we read in the Bible. When Jesus healed, when Jesus taught, people heard his voice and in love they followed him. And that is from the very beginning of his ministry. Think about uh, the words he said, come follow me and, uh, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and they followed him. And think about the thief on the cross uh, at the very end. As Jesus died, he recognized the leader and he uh, gave his life to Jesus. What Jesus is telling us in this passage and what that is and what the calling of the disciples illustrates is when people hear the voice of Jesus, they do indeed respond and they follow his, his lead. Such a response is, is evidence that God did indeed send Jesus, that Jesus is the Good Shepherd, that Jesus is the Messiah. And you know, uh, when you open the Gospel, and when you read a Gospel from front to back, and um, that's what's going to happen. Uh, that, well, that can happen for any one of us. We can pick up a Bible. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we, we're looking forward to the King's coronation next week. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the King of Kings, Jesus, uh, we, we will be distributing Gospels through our church. If you sit and read that Gospel from front to back, you will encounter the King of Kings. If you are in any doubt, Jesus is saying, look to the sheep and how they follow. The man who enters by the gate is a shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own and goes on ahead of them, the sheep follow his voice because they know it. Verses two, three, and four. Jesus is saying the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep is testimony to the authentic uh, nature of who Jesus is. As followers of Jesus, I, I, I would say to you, um, that's a wonderful thought, isn't it? Um, and it's something that we can celebrate and we can enjoy. Jesus um, knows that your love, the love that's on your heart for him, the voice that you follow is testimony to the goodness and the loving care and the very existence of the Good Shepherd. If you have given your heart to Jesus, then your life is going to be a living testimony to the one whom you follow. And that's, that's the first thing I would like to say this morning about this passage uh, from the Gospel. And the second uh, also refers to, um, is, is about identity, uh, because that, that's about identity. Who is the identity of Jesus? The second is, is betwixt verses 6 and 10. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep and all uh, all who ever come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Who enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Verse 6 tells us that Jesus is met with uh, blank stairs. They did not understand uh, what he was telling them. Uh, so Jesus uh, does continue with a fuller 
explanation of that. And uh, the explanation uh, refers to the shepherd uh, sleeping over the entrance to the fold. And uh, that's a that's a and that's what we you find there through verses seven to ten. And it's a wonderful picture because it takes me back immediately to Psalm 121, one of my favourite psalms of all time. Uh, and um, the Lord watches over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Psalm 121. The shepherd watches over your coming and going. Uh, it's the same, uh, isn't it? It's a beautiful picture where the safety of the sheep is uttermost in the mind of the shepherd. The shepherd's priority is the sheep. And, uh, and because his priority is the sheep, he concludes that little passage by saying, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Uh, he's, that's his purpose to make sure that you and I have life and life to its full. And you know, um, every one of us knows uh, within us uh, questions about who is God, meaning and identity. They're, they're never far from the human mind if you sit and pause for a moment, are they? And, uh, and, and this, this, is, this is what Jesus is, is answering in these very few short verses. The promise we find in these verses is as relevant today as it was back then. We are all aware that there must be something more in life than uh, what we do work and consume. We all know there must be more than that, isn't there? Um, many thieves have told lies. Many thieves have deceived the sheep. Many thieves have stolen away uh, that uh, which brings peace to our hearts and uh, leaves them for dead. The, sh the good shepherd is saying, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. If you feel, um, if you feel that uh, work, consumerism, all that kind of stuff is, uh, is, is all there is, uh, I, I'd urge you to look to this passage uh, today. The good shepherd is calling out to you, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. But not only does Jesus call us to follow, he, uh, and I've just gone slightly ahead in the, the, in the passage than what you have there, because the next verse said, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. These, uh, these words, as, as this whole passage is, is a great source of strength and comfort for us as, as followers of Jesus. There are many obstacles and many dangers in our life. There are many demands upon our energy uh, and, uh, and at times we can feel overwhelmed. Uh, but the good news is that we're not alone. There's one who watches over us and gives us strength and the protection that we need. And um, he says, I am the good shepherd. And you see that picture of the fold? It, it gives me a, an image of a narrow gate. And Jesus does use the term, the narrow gate. Uh, and that's a beautiful picture. And I can tell you, if you, if you over one of these bank holiday uh, weekends in the month of May, if you go to Downhill Castle, if you're up on the North Coast, uh, you'll right that castle is what they call a ha-ha. Uh -huh, which is a great deep ditch uh, and a stone side on it. But there is a gate uh, and there is a narrow gate uh, that brings you in uh, to the castle grounds. Jesus is that narrow gate for each and every one of us. The, the gate through which we travel uh, to, to his kingdom. And uh, he, he uh, has all those promises uh, for us. Uh, of what his kingship gives us and he's encouraging us if we haven't gone through that gate to make that journey um, so today as i draw these uh, words to close remember when we respond to the words come follow me we're following jesus the the good shepherd uh, jesus the authentic son of god and we're following him because uh, we want in him what he has promised to give us that we may have life and have it in all its fullness. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, the words from John's Gospel this morning. We thank you for that beautiful image uh, that Jesus used of a shepherd and the sheep. Father, help us uh, to follow our shepherd 
each and every day, that we may bring glory to him through our actions, and that we may know uh, life in all its fullness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, let's now continue uh, in, in our uh, worship as we sing together hymn number 644, Faithful Shepherd, Lead Me in the Pastor's Dream. Hear our prayer. And Lord, you are our shepherd, and we pray 
uh, for our families and friends who uh, have not heard the voice of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who knows every one of them by name, who offers rest to the weary and salvation to all, and life eternal to all who accept him into their lives. And so in a moment of quietness, let's remember before God those whom we love and, uh, and hold dear in our hearts and we want them to know Jesus. Uh, let's pray. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And Lord, you are our shepherd and you seek out the lost and the sick. We pray for those today who are sick uh, or in, uh, in hospital or in, at home or in nursing homes. And we ask you, Lord, to reassure them with the knowledge that you're watching over them in their suffering. That they, And we pray, Father, for their recovery. And in the quietness of this church, uh, we remember uh, those who are sick or suffering, naming before God those known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Our Lord, you are our shepherd. So we remember those who have died. And in each day, in each year, there is an anniversary that turns for somebody within our church family. And so we come alongside them now in prayer. Those who ache with sorrow in their loss of a loved one. And as we remember those within our church family, we also remember uh, those bereaved uh, as a consequence of a recent crash on the A5 at Loch Ock McCloy. We also remember those uh, that are in hospital as a consequence of that. And we pray, Father, for your healing on them all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the week ahead, uh, we're mindful that on Saturday, uh, Charles uh, will be, King Charles will be crowned. So we pray for the royal family, we pray for, uh, for King Charles, and we pray for uh, the royal family at this time. We thank you, Father, for King Charles' role as head of state. We thank you for the example set by his mother, and we pray for him as he takes on. Uh, the, the burden of uh, being our head of state. We pray for him uh, in, in his role, but also we pray for him uh, in his family life. We pray, Father, your blessing upon him and the whole royal family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. And Lord, you are our shepherd, and we thank you for this time that we've shared in prayer and thanksgiving. In the week ahead, we'd ask that you lead us down the streets uh, of our town and uh, our town land and guide us safely uh, along the roads that you have for us to travel. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. And now let us draw our prayers to a close in the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Our final hymn today is hymn number 336, uh, which is also our offering hymn. 336.
been called uh, in the week ahead to follow the lead of the Good Shepherd. So God, by his grace, has given talents and gifts to all of his people. And we thank you, God, for the gifts and the talents here in this parish of Macrobol. As we look at the week past, we give you thanks, Father, for the gifts and talents of our new vestry. And we pray that in the service of God in this parish, all the gifts and talents of, of your people in this place will grow and flourish as we seek to build your kingdom in this place as brothers and sisters uh, of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And may the God of all grace, who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let's go in, uh, to love and peace. Let's go to serve the Lord in love and peace. In, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.